Hello and welcome to this preview of Q School 2021 with me, Liam Kenny. Uh, what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be previewing the event, giving you some ones to watch, and telling you who I think might be a good bet, including a 900 to 1 request a bet special. Let's jump in. We start with Niall Cullerton. Now, believe it or not, Niall Cullerton is actually the most popular bet for Q School at 5 to 1. That's with Boyle Sports. Now, last year at Q School, he was ranked 11th overall on the Q School leaderboard and was just one point away from winning his tour card last year. He managed to play 16 matches in Q School 2020. Now, I think that's going to be invaluable experience. And uh, looking at the, the way the bets are going, so do lots of other people. So first one up, Niall Cullerton at 5 to 1. Next up, we have Welshman John Worsley. Now, John Worsley is a perennial Q School entrant, and he's actually qualified through Q School twice before, um, both on the order of merit. Um, now, last time he entered in 2019, he actually finished first on the order of merit. Now, a lot of people will tell you that, I believe, is probably harder to do than actually winning a tour card outright. John's been there and done it twice. He won't be phased. And, uh, of course, we all know he's a challenge tour winner. And uh, from my opinion, his second year on tour was a lot better than his first. Um, so he is getting more comfortable to the tour. And obviously, don't look at his ranking position too much as he did miss out on the World Championships both years in the PDC. So he's a lot better player than he looks on paper. And at 11 to 2, I think he is possibly the best value bet this year. Next up, we've got Dutchman Mike Kuvenhoven, who I actually was surprised to learn that he'd lost his tour card after watching him on the tour in 2020. Now, in this year, he did have a lot better year two than year one, similar to John Worsley, and he was actually a World Championship and Euro Tour qualifier, um, obviously losing to Matthew Edgar 3-0 in the first round. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think... If he had won that game, he would have kept his card, so he was very much on the margin of keeping it. And he had a couple of big wins over MVG on the Pro Tour last year, so he is a very talented player. At 7-4, to four, I think Mike Covenhoven is probably as close to a guaranteed card as you can get, and I'm very surprised that he's not shorter. I'd imagine he should be around evens. Now we move on to Marco Cantelli at 7-1. to one. Now, I think this is a very good price considering Marco's experience. And he's he's a very steady player and he's a very awkward, he's got a very awkward rhythm. Um, now, watching Marco in the home tour quite a lot this year, I backed against him quite a lot and he proved me wrong a lot of times. He's a lot better player than he looks on paper. And I think at 7-1, to one, he's well worth a punt as he is, of course, into the final stage of Euro Q School. And anybody coming up against him will find his rhythm very very hard to play against. Now, everybody's favourite Greek, Jean-Michel, uh, a two times Q School qualifier. He's been there and done it before. And similar, I keep, see, keep saying this quite similar, but he did have a better year two than year one on the tour. And uh, in his in his previous uh, Q School endeavours, he's finished second and fifth on the order of merit. One thing for John Michael here is his experience. He's not going to be phased uh, going back into Q School. He's been there and done it twice. And I think at five to two, that's a very fair price for a man that's been there and done it. Next up, we've got the Joker, John O'Shea, but make no mistake, he is no joke. Two times last 64s last year, just running out of steam. He was covering so much momentum last year, and I'm hoping that this time will be third time lucky for him, as this is his third attempt at Q School. I know from speaking to my brother, Nicholas Kenny, who's in the same stable as John, that he's been practicing very hard, and who can count out a former World Masters winner? At five and a half to one, you really should be having a look at the Joker, John O'Shea. Shay. Now I move on to our highest price today, which is Adrian Gray. Now, Adrian has just lost his tour card, and he is a very, very solid scorer. Now, I did a bit of an analysis of his results over the last sort of year, and he's had some very tough first-round draws, so it would tell me that he's probably a better player than his ranking would suggest. He's a, a perennial sort of challenge tour kind of guy and does tend to do well on there. And um, He's in the final stage, which this year seems to be a sort of glorified challenge tour, and at 12-1, to 1, I don't think you can look past Adrian Gray. 
Now, another man who's been there and done it. Last, uh, the last time he entered Q School, he got through on the order of merit after losing in the semi-final to Matt Clark. He's a man that's very young in his darting career, Gavin Carlin, and he's just lost his car just gone by. And I think that's going to make him hungrier. And I think we could see a resurgence in the style of Dirk van Dijvenbode with Gavin Carling. As, oh, as you see with, uh, with Bradley Brooks last year, he said losing his car was the worst thing that could happen to him. And we've seen what that did. So I think Gavin Carlin will win his car straight back and have a resurgence on the tour this year. Now, a man that came very close last year and has played some stuff on the tour this year, Stephen Burton. He got to a quarterfinal in the last 16 last year in Q School, and he's a two times Challenge Tour winner in 2019. Having looked at some of his tweets, Stephen is seeming very hungry and looks like he might have a new lease of life. Going into Q School, that's exactly the mindset that you need. So I'll be keeping a close eye on Stephen Burton, and we'll be backing him at 4 to 1. He's going to the UK Q School, and he will be in the final stage. Um, so, yeah, Stephen Burton at 4 to 1 is our next pick. Now, next up is our shortest price, the shortest price I'm going to pick out for you. And this is Martin Schindler at 5 to 4. Now, there's a lot of other people that are sort of close to the odds, like your Jim Williams is, your Raymond Van Barnevelds, but I'm very surprised that Martin Schindler's actually lost his card. Um, having a look through it, he's uh, kind of reversed to the others where he had a much poorer 2020 than he did 2019. And despite being so young, he's only 23 or 24, he's born in 96, he's got very good experience for his age. He's played a lot of development tour stuff. He's been around for many years. I remember him playing a World Youth Championship about four or five years ago so I would say he's probably better than 95% of the players that are going to be in European Q school and if he doesn't retain his card then I will uh, if he doesn't win his card back I'd be very surprised now, for the first time in my recollection, you can bet against people to win a tour card. So I've picked out two that I think might be quite good value. The first one that I've gone for is Danny Baggish. Now, a lot of people are telling me that I'm an idiot for this one. But I think there's a lot of pressure on Danny Baggish coming over from North America. And obviously, after his great world championship, there's a lot of eyes on him. Even even the Dark Connect. He's on the Dark Connect advertisement for Q School. Now, that doesn't make it a level playing field, which is why I've selected Raymond Van Barneveld as well. There's a lot of eyes on these two players players, which means they're not able to go about their business as the other players in Q score will. And at one to one for Danny Baggish not to win a tour card, I think that's incredible value for a player that is actually quite unproven in Europe. Rome, Raymond van Barneveld, as we know, struggled on the hockey in his last year, and he often cited having mental demons. Now, I know when you're practicing, you can actually feel like you've eradicated that, but then until you put yourself into a game situation, you you often find that those feelings do come rushing back. So I think if Raymond doesn't do well on his first couple of days, he's going to really struggle. So uh, 11 to 10, I think that's worth a punt. Now, here is my request to bet special. So I've gone for John Worsley, Adrian Gray, Marco Cantelay, and Mike Covenhoven. That comes in at a staggering 900 to 1. Now, the reason I've picked these four is I think this year, more than ever before, we'll see players who've just lost their tour cards winning them right back. Now, I think this is down to the year that's gone by with COVID affecting amateur darts in such a dramatic way. Players haven't been able to get the experience on the hockey, whether that be county games, BDO tour, uh, pub leagues even, or even just like real life practice. I know a lot of online games have been played, but you can't replicate PDC conditions, especially Q school at home. So I think more than ever this year, the experience of playing competitive darts in the last 12 months will really help the players that have just lost their cards. And I think a good 60-70% of tour card winners this year will be people that just lost their cards. So I'm struggling to see how this is worth 900 to 1. But yeah, if you've got a spare pound just to give yourself some entertainment through Q Score Week, I definitely recommend giving this one a go. Now, at the time of making this video, news broke that Australian Kyle Anderson would be retiring his tour card, which meant that Mike Covenhoven, who was ranked 66 in the Order of Merit, would retain his. Uh, so our request to bet... Um, became kind of void straight away but what I've done is I've, I've kept with the same logic uh, uh, that, that I've explained and I've replaced him uh, with John Michael um, because he's roughly the same Oz and the logic is pretty much the same but um, yeah I said I'd be surprised if uh, Kevin Hoven didn't win his tour card but um, yeah I didn't expect it to come that quickly. <laughs> So there we have it. There are my picks and ones to watch for Q School 2021. 
If you've got any different picks or you want me to run the rule over any of your suggestions, you want me to give you a little bit of insight on a certain player, let me know down below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, in the meantime, this is a brand new channel, so if you wouldn't mind, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.